Welcome to Gyan Gatha. The aim of making these videos is to make the listener aware of the depth of Sanatan Dharma. We will start with a series of videos giving a glimpse of the magnificence and majesty of Devi Mahatmya. It is believed that there are many covert mantras within the text. At times, mantras are even encoded into the narrative. Exploring the encoded mantras is beyond the scope of this presentation as it is possible only through an exclusive commentary written with the aim of exploring the Devi Mahatmyam as a great mantramaya text by sadhakas rooted in Vedic tradition and engaged in deep study of the text. The Devi Mahatmyam or literally speaking glory of the goddess is also known as Sri Durga Saptashiti, Sri Chandi or Saptashiti. It is referred to as Saptashiti as it comprises of 700 mantras and not 700 shlokas as it is mistakenly referred to. It is more popularly known as Chandi because it describes the glory of the goddess as Chandika which means the terrible. We will discuss this further as we go along. Dharma Tantra declares that Devi Mahatmyam is the best of stutis in the same way as Ashwamed Yagya, is hailed as the perfect example of Kratu, that is Yajna, and Hari, that is Vishnu, is hailed as the embodiment of Devas. Among the sacred texts that laud the glory of the mother, Lalita Sahasranamam and Devi Mahatmyam are the most popular. Both are considered to be extremely auspicious and powerful as tools of transformation. Both can be recited daily, while Lalita Sahasranamam describes the victory of the goddess over Bhandasura, the Devi Mahatmyam describes the victory of the goddess over the Asuras Madhu, Kaitaba, Mahishasur and Shumbha Nishumbha. It is covered in chapters 81 to 93 of Markandeya Purana. While the word Devi may be used to refer to any goddess, here it is used to denote the Supreme Goddess adored as the Divine Mother of the entire universe. The Devi Mahatmyam is a highly occult text. Only those who have inner eyes will perceive the hidden truths, others know not. It is held that Markandeya, the seer of this myth, had seen the ever-existent glory of the goddess with the inner eye. The Meru Tantra proclaims that even Vishnu knows only three quarters of the inner sense, Brahma knows half, Vyasa knows only a quarter, while others know only a fraction of the true significance of the Devi Mahatmyam. As such, it would need a lifetime of study for us to understand even a small part of the fraction itself. This entire series of videos is therefore only an introduction aimed at motivating viewers to study further. Shri Bhaskar Raya named his commentary on the Devi Mahatmyam as Guptavati, denoting the hidden and highly occult nature of Devi Mahatmyam. Part Myth and part philosophy, the text addresses some very important existential questions that have overwhelmed mankind since time immemorial. While its stories can be taken as metaphors relating to our own psychological or spiritual landscape, as well as the challenges we face in life. There isn't a single approach to the Devi Mahatmyam or the Chandi. The various hymns to the Goddess in the Devi Mahatmyam inspire us to devotion for the personal forms of God as Mother, while its deeper philosophical and mysterious interpretation leads us to the realization of God as the impersonal supreme reality. Though the Devi Mahatmyam constitutes chapters 81 to 93 in the Markandeya Puran, 
it is not merely treated as a part of a Puran. It has an intrinsic independent status by itself. It does not derive its significance from its Puranic background. It is a full-fledged scripture by itself. Part narrative and part hymn. The Devi Mahatmyam combines the strengths of both the oral and written traditions. On one hand, it is like a synthesis of many myths from many sources, skillfully integrated into a single narrative and thus incorporates the best of the Puranic approach. On the other hand, it also displays the bardic style of the Vedic approach that combines the best of preliterate and literate strengths of expression in so far as the hymns are concerned. Sri Bhaskar Raya, the most famous of all commentators, affirms the hymns are being drishta, that is seen, rather than as being krita, that is made, thus awarding them the exalted status of revealed knowledge, that is shruti, generally accorded only to the Veda. No wonder that Bhuvaneshwari Samhita states, just as the Vedas have no beginning, so is Saptashiti considered. Unlike the Puran that has the status of being an auxiliary limb, that is Upang of the Veda, Devi Mahatmyam has attained the status of Shruti, the very status accorded to the Veda. The Katyani Tantra considers each verse of Devi Mahatmyam as a mantra. In fact, there are some who affirm that every word of the text is a mantra. Besides, the whole text is treated like one Maha Mantra. Though three-fourths of the scripture deals with description of battles and their associated narratives, even these contents are considered to be mantras. There are 537 shlok mantras, full shlokas, 38 ardha shloka mantras, that is half shlokas, 66 khand mantras, that is part of a shloka, 57 uvacha mantras, and 2 puranukta mantras, thus totaling 700 together. The actual number of verses in the text is only 518 not 700 as stated by some modern writers. The number 700 is thus not related to the number of verses but indicates the total number of mantras in the Devi Mahatmyam. Though the details of the breakup of the mantras are not important for simple recitation, these details are more important for Chandi Hom, Japa and Archana. The popularity of Devi Mahatmyam can be inferred from the sheer number of commentaries by several traditional scholars. There were at least 65 commentaries on the Devi Mahatmyam, though all of them are not available today. The book with seven commentaries, that is, Santanavi, Pushpanjali, Ramasrami, Nageshi, Guptavati, Durga Pratipa, and the Masodhara is quite well known and easily available. Apart from this, there are some excellent commentaries in other regional languages too. As already stated earlier, the Devi Mahatmyam interweaves four elegant hymns in between the ghastly narratives of bloodshed and slaughter. While the majority of the verses in the text are in the simpler Anushtop meter, the hymns bring into play more elegant meters such as Vasanta Tilak and Upajati also, thus creating an elegant, complex, rhythmic flexibility when sung. The hymns are not only devotional and poetic, but also philosophical and sublime. In the next part, we will see more about the concept of God as Divine Mother and a glimpse into various levels of truth hidden in the Devi Mahatma.